Hi guys, this is C.A. Balakrishna. In this class, we will be discussing Arbitration and Conciliation Act. Basically, this Arbitration and Conciliation or Alternate Dispute Resolution Mechanisms. If you see, Dispute Resolution Mechanisms would be of two types. One is a Primary Dispute Resolution Mechanism. The example would be a court. And Alternate Dispute Resolution Mechanism, all this Arbitration, Conciliation, Mediation will be coming under this alternate dispute resolution mechanisms now what are the advantages of this alternate dispute resolution mechanisms the major advantage is lower cost see if you approach a court you have to pay some fees to the court and you have to appoint a lawyer on your behalf who will charge a lot of fees whereas in case of this alternate dispute resolution mechanisms you can appoint any of your you know known person as arbitrator or conciliator or mediator as per your convenience and also the cost involved in conducting these proceedings will be very lower when compared to court to based proceedings okay that will be the first advantage of this alternate dispute resolution mechanisms next flexibility of the process okay you can design the process as per your convenience in case of this alternate dispute resolution mechanism and higher confidentiality the proceedings that are being conducted by this alternate dispute resolution mechanisms will not be accessible to the public okay they will be confidential and likelihood of settlement see if you approach a court the result will be either win or lose but settlement will not happen whereas this alternate dispute resolution mechanisms will try to make a settlement between the parties okay most of the ADRs that is alternate dispute resolution mechanisms will try to make a settlement instead of win or lose situation that is another advantage and choice of forum from the various alternate dispute resolution mechanisms available you can choose whatever forum you want that means you can go either for arbitration or for conciliation or for mediation as per your requirement and choice of the solutions these are the advantages of alternate dispute resolution mechanisms now starting with arbitration what are the features of the arbitration first of all first of all there must be a valid arbitration agreement if parties want to submit their dispute to the uh, arbitration there must be a valid arbitration agreement among the parties and they must appoint an arbitrator okay for the purpose of arbitrating the dispute and they have to decide seat of arbitration let's say parties have decided the seat of arbitration to be india in that case all the laws and regulations that are applicable in india will be made use for the purpose of uh, you know resolving the dispute through arbitration and party autonomy and procedure okay the parties to the arbitration can decide on the procedure that has to be followed for conducting this arbitral proceedings and the the proceedings will be confidential and the finality of the outcome that means once the arbitrator has given the arbitral award the parties cannot file an appeal against the arbitral award okay in the 95 in 95 percent of the cases no appeal can be filed against arbitral award but there are some situations in which orbit uh, the appeal can be filed that is arbitral award can be challenged that we will be discussing like uh, if the any of the party feels that uh, the arbitrator has shown some of the bias to any of the party in that case they can file challenge against the arbitral award like this there are only some scenarios or some situations in which a challenge can be raised against the arbitral award but in the most of the cases arbitral award is non-appealable next arbitration agreement the arbitration agreement must be in writing however even arbitration agreement through electronic form that is through email will also be sufficient arbitration agreement will be of two types one is arbitration clause and another one is submission agreement see first of all arbitration clause let's say you have entered into a partnership agreement now while entering into partnership agreement 
in the agreement itself you can have a clause wherein if at all any disputes arises in the future such disputes will be submitted to the arbitration such type of clause will be known as arbitration clause now this clause is being entered for the disputes that might arise in the future whereas submission agreement let's say you have entered into partnership agreement in the partnership agreement there was no arbitration clause now after entering into partnership agreement after some years a dispute has arisen now you want to submit this dispute to arbitration in that case you can enter into a separate arbitration agreement that means the this type of arbitration agreement will be known as submission agreement that means the submission agreement is being entered after the dispute has arisen hope that is clear that is the difference between arbitration clause and submission agreement now what are the general principles relating to this first of all consent of all parties if at all you want to submit uh, you want to submit the dispute to the arbitration all the parties must give their consent for submitting the dispute to the arbitration next outstar of jurisdiction that means the arbitration the arbitral tribunal must arbitrate only those disputes that have been submitted for arbitration hope that is clear arbitral tribunal should not arbitrate the disputes that have not been submitted to the arbitral tribunal hope that is clear next doctrine of separability i will be discussing in the next point c okay while discussing the termination of arbitration agreement i will discuss the doctrine of separability now some other points the dispute must be arbitrable that means the let's say you have killed some person now this type of offense of killing a person cannot be arbitrated uh, cannot be arbitrated that means criminal offenses cannot be arbitrated therefore the dispute which you are submitting for arbitration must be arbitrable okay next defined legal relationship the relationship between the parties to the arbitration must be of a legal relationship these are some additional points now we will see termination of arbitration agreement what are the cases in which the arbitration agreement will come to an end okay when what are the cases in which the arbitration agreement will be terminated let us see first one mutual consent the parties to the arbitration agreement can discuss among themselves and come to a conclusion that let us terminate this arbitration agreement that would be through mutual consent next termination of principal contract see it can be divided into two parts let's say the principal contract is partnership agreement now you have entered into partnership agreement for a period of 5 years in this partnership agreement there is some arbitration clause now after completion of 5 years partnership agreement that is principal contract will come to an end along with the principal contract even this arbitration clause is there now the arbitration agreement clause even such type of arbitration clause will also come to end due to termination of principal contract that is due to non renewal after completion of tenure of principal contract arbitration agreement also terminates this is one situation second situation due to dispute that means you have entered into partnership agreement for some period but before completion of such period only a dispute has arisen among the partners and due to such dispute they have terminated the arbit uh, terminated the this uh, partnership agreement okay the principal contract has been terminated but due to operation of doctrine of separability even though the principal contract has been terminated due to dispute the arbitration clause or the arbitration agreement will not be terminated okay the parties can submit this dispute to the arbitration hope that is clear this is because of operation of doctrine of separability wherein the principal contract will be treated as separate from the arbitration clause or the arbitration agreement hope that is clear this is where the doctrine of separability will operate next 
arbitral tribunal c first of all when you submit a dispute to the arbitration you have to appoint a arbitral tribunal in the arbitral tribunal there will be arbitrators okay these arbitrators will listen to the dispute and will give the judgment will give the arbitral award let us see who will appoint this arbitral tribunal parties who are submitting the dispute to the arbitration will appoint the arbitral tribunal this arbitral tribunal will perform functions which are similar to that of judge of a court who can be arbitrator any person capable of entering into contract can be appointed as arbitrator and how many arbitrators must be appointed any number of arbitrators can be appointed by the parties provided such a number must be a odd number okay even number of arbitrators cannot be appointed however while deciding on number of arbitrators to be appointed the parties can consider the fees that has to be paid to the arbitrators and time that will be involved in solving this dispute and what is the complexity of this uh, dispute based on all these uh, you know characteristics they can decide on number of arbitrators to be appointed to the arbitrate or arbitral tribunal hope that is clear next procedure for appointment any procedure that party feels uh, you know favorable to them or party feels convenient can adopt such procedure for appointing the arbitral tribunal but commonly these three procedures are followed what are they first one parties will jointly will appoint the arbitrators that is one of the scenario or each party will appoint one arbitrator and these appointed arbitrators will appoint the balance number of arbitrators this this is another method or the parties can decide that the arbitrator will be appointed by some other unrelated third party let's say the president of icai has to appoint the arbitrator for our arbitral tribunal like this the parties can decide among themselves these are some of the common methods through which an arbitrator can be appointed next arbitrator the person whom you are going to appoint as a arbitrator can be of any nationality and he must be capable of entering into a contract and he should not have any biasedness towards the parties to the arbitration and he must be independent and he must be he must show impartiality okay he must not act you know he must not show partiality to any of the parties he must act impartially next now if arbitrator wants arbitrator can leave voluntarily okay by giving reasons why arbitrator is leaving he can leave the arbitral tribunal or if all parties agree that we have to remove this arbitrator and appoint a new arbitrator even in that case also parties can remove the appointed arbitrator next by operation of law the arbitrator can be removed how if arbitrator is unable to exercise his duties example would be due to sickness in that case the arbitrator will be removed or arbitration process has come to end if at all the arbitration process itself is completed then what will the arbitrator will do he will be terminated now court orders arbitrator to be removed why any of the party approach to the court saying that this arbitrator is acting by showing some biasedness towards other party in that case court can order such arbitrator to be removed okay these are the scenarios in which arbitrator will be removed next remove or arbitrator himself can you know resign next once the arbitrator is remove, uh, removed or resigned a new arbitrator must be appointed or while the first appointment itself the parties have to appoint the arbitrator now if the parties are not able to appoint the arbitrator then the parties can approach domestic in uh, in case of domestic arbitration they can approach high court for appointing the arbitrator in case of international commercial arbitration they can approach supreme court okay asking the supreme court to appoint arbitrator for their you know uh, arbitration 
next arbitral award basically arbitral award means the judgment given by the arbitrator would be known as arbitral award basically this arbit arbitral award would be of four types first one is final award that means once the entire proceedings are completed the final judgment that the arbitrator gives will be known as final award next interim award this interim award can be of two types let's say till the time see for giving the final order it might take some lot of time thereby till the time the final order is given some interim order can be granted or interim award can be granted by the arbitrator that is one type of interim award second type is let's say three disputes are submitted to the arbitrator now of this three dispute regarding this dispute the first dispute final arbitral award is given okay final award is given now this award is final in respect of one dispute whereas if you see with respect to all other disputes that have been submitted this award would be interim award only okay this is another type of interim award <coughs> next settlement award now let's say while the dispute is being arbitrated the parties might feel that they want to settle the dispute in that case they can communicate to the arbitrator of their intention to settle the dispute and the terms on which they have they, they are willing to settle the dispute if the arbitrator feels uh, feels that the settlement is in the best interest of both the parties then the the terms of settlement that have been agreed uh, you know by these parties will be implemented into the order and such a type of award will be known as settlement award and the final one would be additional award let's say the arbitrator has given the final award okay final award has been given after giving the final award the parties feel that some of the disputes that have been submitted to the arbitration were not addressed in such case the parties can again approach the arbitrator asking the arbitrator to consider these disputes and give additional award okay that would be the additional award and these are the four types of arbitral awards next requirements of a arbitral award firstly the arbitral award must be a decision by majority of the arbitrators next the arbitral award must be in writing it must be dated and it must be signed by the arbitrators next must be reasoned that means the reason for arriving at, at a, such arbitral award must also be provided in the arbitral award and must not be vague the arbitral award must not be vague it must be clearly communicated to the parties and also the arbitral award must not be illegal okay it must be legal now challenging the arbitral award who can challenge the arbitral award only parties to the arbitration can challenge the arbitral award with whom the challenge can be made in case of domestic arbitration the challenge can be made with the district court whereas in case of international commercial arbitration challenge can be made with the high court within which time the challenge should be made within three months and the maximum extension of 30 days will be granted now grounds of challenge the first ground of challenge can be biasedness okay if any of the party feels that the arbitrator has acted by showing some biasness towards other party then they can challenge the arbitral award or overstepping the jurisdiction that means if any of the party feels that a particular dispute has not been submitted to the arbitrator okay to the arbitration even though the dispute has not been submitted he has given arbitral award relating to such a dispute which is not submitted to him that would be known as overstepping overstepping the jurisdiction even in such case also a challenge against the arbitral award can be made next challenge in the form of review of award can be made when any of the party feels that the other party is under incapacity that means he is not eligible to enter into a contract if any of the party feels so that such other party is 
under incapacity to enter into agreement then a challenge to review the award can be made or invalid arbitration agreement if the parties feel that the arbitration agreement itself is invalid then a challenge to review the arbitral award can be made or no notice to party about appointment of arbitrator or arbitral proceedings see there are two parties mr a mr b mr a wants the matter to be arbitrated arbitrated thereby he will directly he himself uh, uh, appoints the arbitral tribunal and he will you know conduct the proceedings and he himself will you know uh, get the arbitral award passed without giving any intimation to the other party mr b okay in that case mr b can challenge the arbitral award to review the award next award deals with disputes which are not submitted to the arbitration or arbitral tribunal is not as per the requirements of law in this cases challenge to review the arbitral award can be made or subject matter is not arbitrable or award is in contravention of public policy in india in all these cases challenge in the form of review of award can be made next consequences of challenge once a challenge of arbitral award is made what type of cons consequences can be you know what type of orders can be passed by either the district court or the high court first one set aside what the district court or high court might feel that the arbitral award that has been granted by the arbitral tribunal is completely irrelevant in that case it will set aside the arbitral award that has been granted or confirm it will confirm the arbitral award that has been granted by the arbitral tribunal or make some modifications to the arbitral award or remit back to the arbitral tribunal okay it can say that arbitral tribunal you please reconsider the case and give a fresh award these are the four types of consequences that can be happened once a challenge of award has been made next moving to conciliation see in the arbitration there will be a situation of win or lose one party will win and other party will lose in the arbitration the arbitrator will act similar to that of a judge whereas in case of conciliation there will be no win or lose situation there will be settlement among the parties and the conciliator in the conciliation will not act as a judge okay he will not pass any judgment instead he will facilitate the parties to discuss among themselves and to reach to a settlement okay that would be the role of conciliator in case of conciliation if you see some of the features from arbitration are taken and some of the features from mediation are taken and a concept known as conciliation is designed in the conciliation there will be settlement agreement okay there will be no win or lose situation first of all to start conciliation proceedings the parties to the conciliation must agree voluntarily to you know submit the dispute to the conciliation and in case of conciliation parties will be non adversarial that means the party one party will not try to prove that other party is wrong okay even this other party will also not try to prove that such other party is wrong instead they will mutually discuss among themselves to reach to a particular settlement that would be non adversarial parties will be non adversarial and finality of settlement see in case of mediation the settlement in case of mediation also settlement will happen but the settlement that has been taken place under mediation will be in the form of contract between the parties okay you can simply say enforceable contract whereas the settlement that has been reached under this conciliation will be in the form of decree of a court okay as if a judgment has been passed by the court that would be the nature of settlement that has been arrived under this conciliation
that is the difference between settlement under conciliation and settlement under mediation and the confidentiality okay all the proceedings of this conciliation will be confidential how this proceedings will start how this uh, conciliation will start one party will give invitation of conciliation to the second party once such invitation is given if the second party accepts the invitation the conciliation proceedings will start if the second party rejects the invitation the conciliation proceedings will not start if no reply from the second party within 30 days then first party can deem that the second party has rejected the invitation hope that is clear next how many number of conciliators can be appointed maximum three conciliators can be appointed okay you cannot appoint more than three conciliators and procedures each party shall submit evidences to the conciliator okay there is mr a there is mr b mr a will submit his evidences and documents to conciliator mr b will submit his evidences and documents to conciliator now the conciliator will share the evidences submitted by mr b with mr a and the evidence is submitted by Mr. A with Mr. B. After sharing them, the conciliator will ask the parties to discuss among themselves mutually and to come to a settlement. Hope that is clear. That, that is how the procedure of conciliation take place. Note, during conciliation, no single party can approach court or arbitration. Hope that is clear. Now, termination of conciliation. When will this conciliation process come to an end first one is on signing the settlement agreement once the parties reach a settlement and a settlement agreement has been signed the uh, this uh, conciliation will come to an end or written declaration that conciliation be terminated see if any of these three parties gives written declaration to the other party saying that we want to terminate the conciliation in that case also the conciliation will be terminated who are they see conciliator gives a declaration to the parties saying that let us you know uh, stop this conciliation in that case the conciliation will stop or any one party gives declaration to other party and conciliation or any one party gives a declaration to the conciliator stating that we want to you know put a police stop the, uh, to this uh, conciliation process even in that case also this conciliation will come to an end this is the entire revision relating to arbitration and conciliation now in the economic clause we are left with ibc and fema regarding fema I have already uploaded the videos for paper 60 those vid those videos can be used and we also left with PMLA prevention of money laundering act even the PMLA also I have revised for paper 60 same video can be used here also and relating to IBC what I will be doing is some topics I have already covered and some topics yet to be covered relating to IBC I will be I will try to bring a new video for IBC, hope that is clear.